This video is about functions such as some if, some ifs, count if, count ifs. How can you use them? I think they are very important tools for your data analysis. Um, in this section, for instance, I counted how many people we had in planning in our database to the left. Apparently five people and they made altogether 180,000. You probably think I can do that with pivot tables. Mm, in a way you are right. But one problem of pivot tables is that they don't update. These are hard-coded values, whereas these formulas are alive. They keep updating each time you change something in your database. Another situation like here is very hard to do with pivot tables. Here you want to count how many people make up to 25,000. How many people up to 30,000? Four. How much money do they all make, all seven together? And the last one is 18, because I have 18 employees, and all together they make seven, 14,000. So a pivot table would not be a good solution for you, for you could not get that result. So how do you use these functions? Let me start with a simple one, count if, in this table. I use my functions from fx. The advantage of do using fx in front of your formula bar is that you can always get help immediately. Count if. There are several count functions and one of them is count if. In the range of departments you want to count how often do I find accounting. So the range is B2, control shift arrow down, and don't forget to lock that reference. You do that with the key F4. Otherwise, B2 for B19 will change when you copy it down into B3, B20, B4, B21, etc. What is the criteria you are looking for? Please don't type accounting, for then I cannot copy the formula down. I just refer to the cell F2 that has accounting in it. Don't lock that one, because you want that to change into F3, F4, F5, F6. Here is your formula. Copy the formula down with a double click in the right lower corner and you will see that you have five people in planning. I could use that same count if to find out how many people make up to 25,000. I use count if again. We look this time in the range of salaries. C2, control shift arrow down for C19. Don't forget to lock that address so we can copy it down. The criteria is this time a little more complicated. Um, criteria always have to be a text type of entity, a string, they call that. So I have to say less than equal to 25,000. I make that a literal string, double quotes, less than, equal to. And I could type 25,000, but then I cannot copy the formula down. So I stop the string and I hook onto that a reference to the cell with 25,000. How do you hook things together in strings? Space, ampersand, space. And click on the cell that has 25,000 in it, F12. And notice how it translates it into less than equal to 25,000. Double click the formula downwards. And you find up to 18 people in this database. What are their salaries summed? That is a sum if function. Sum if says what is the range you want to sum for? C2, control shift arrow down, lock it please with F4 key. Your criteria is similar as before, less than equal to 25,000, so I need a string in there, double quotes, less than equal to, close your string, hook onto it, space ampersand, space, the cell with 25,000 in it, F12, and I don't need a sum range because I am already summing in the top range, C2 through C19. That's why this is not bold, that means sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. Double click the formula downwards, and altogether they make 714,000. 
Now we are going to do this sum if. It's the range you are checking in. You are checking for accounting. So you are not checking in, in salaries. So select all the departments. B2, control shift arrow down. B19, lock it. Your criteria this time is you have to be in accounting. F2. But this time I do need the sum range because it's very hard to sum departments. But I needed the departments for my criteria. So I sum C2, control shift arrow down for C19. Don't forget to lock it. And OK it and double click the formula downwards. Sometimes you want a two dimensional summary. A pivot table can do that easily, but we saw that formulas can do this too. The only question is how do you get this listing of departments out of this listing with a lot of duplicates? Basically very simple. You select all your departments in the database. Control shift arrow down, copy it, control C. And let's paste it right there. And go to your data tab, remove the duplicates. In column F, yes, we have seven unique values. Let's sort them. Let us sort them. And there we got them in the perfect listing. Now we need something similar for Boston for Worcester. Select all the locations, Control shift arrow down, copy it, paste it somewhere, remove duplicates, and sort them alphabetically. All we have to do now is transpose them into here. Select them, copy them, Control c and paste them into there with home paste special transpose. And now I can delete these guys. All we need now is the sum ifs function. The plural one because we have two different criteria or many more if you want to. Let's call the sum ifs one. The sum ifs one says, in what range are you summing? Is my sum range, of course, C2, etc. But this time I want my range to be dynamic, so I can add new records at the bottom. So instead of doing C2 for C19, I can just select column C. We have to make sure that we lock that column C, so when I copy things to the right that it doesn't change into D. The criteria range, however, is, because I'm looking for accounting, communication, etc., I need column B, always in B, lock it, according to the criteria, in this case, of accounting. F11 should change into F12, F13, but when I copy it to the right, F should not change. So use F4 several times until F is locked and 11 is not locked. What is your second criteria range? This time I need the locations. Column D, make sure that that is absolute. Lock it. My criteria is in this case Boston. Always in row 10. But G can change into H, etc. So lock it until the 10 has the string signed. And copy that formula down with a double click and copy it to the right manually. And you will see there is no one in accounting in Boston. We have a similar situation. These three guys, though they have differently spelled full names, they have the sole social security number. They paid three times a premium. We want to know what is the total premium and how often did they pay premiums. So here I use the count if function. I did that already for you. You will see that that is done in range A2 through 19. You could have done the whole column, of course. Criteria A2. 
because for that cell, the social security number is here, and count how often we find that social security number, three times, and copy that formula downwards. So in this case, we found four times payments by Donaldson. The total one is done with sum if, of course. It says, I look in the criteria range, social security numbers, for this specific social security number, and I sum all the premiums that come with it. Great. However, there is one drawback that you have to be aware of. I did all the work for you already here, and I can assure you these formulas are correct. But it tells me that Boston Communication has no one in it. And I know there are two people in Boston Communication. How is that possible? The explanation is very simple. There is no communication here. There is communication space. And something similar here. Sometimes the space is at the beginning, but you can see that because that one would be out of line. But we could have a similar problem in the locations column. How do you fix that? A very simple trick. You are going to clean up column B. Let's do that with a temporary column before C. I right click on C, insert a column. And in C2, we are going to fix that marketing, make sure that it has no spaces at the beginning and at the end. The function that does that is called trim. It's a vital function for this kind of work. You trim B2. It looks exactly the same, but sometimes it can save you a lot of trouble. You have to clean up this column. The column is not cleaned up yet. I did it in column C, so I'm going to put column C in B. Right click on those data, copy them. Right click on B2 and paste special the values. And notice at the moment I click on OK that Boston communication is now correct because it has no spaces anymore. I can delete column C because that was just temporary. And I should do something similar for the location column. These and many other tricks that you need to know, you can find on a CD-ROM that I developed for you, Excel 2007 Expert. It has a huge amount of slides, 1500 slides, that discuss all these issues in Module 1, these issues, Module 2, Module 3, and they include what I discussed in this video, but much, much more. Where can you, where can you find this CD-ROM? At MrExcel.com or Amazon.com. Just type my name, Gerard Verschuren, and you will find all the CD-ROMs and books I developed for you. I wish you good luck.